All rise. 14 A District Court for County Washington State of Michigan is now back in session. You may be seated. Court does call the case people versus Bruce Larkins. Good morning, Your Honor. Joy Gaines, Senior Assistant Public Defender. Judge, I would ask, ask that the uh, officer in charge, Mark Tess Gibbs, be allowed to sit with me at the council table, and we are going to sequester the other witnesses. All right. Our witnesses are ordered sequestered. Defendant and officer in charge may remain. We call your first witness. Thank you. We call call Arnold Warnock. Sir, please come forward. Be sworn. Testimony about the gift will be the truth, the whole truth, and not the truth. So, if you got it, you see, date and spell your first and last name. Arnold, Arnold, and the Arnold, and the Arnold. You may inquire. Thank you. Arnold, um, is there something that happened on July 3rd of this year that brings you to court today? Yes, what was that? Okay. Um, and did that happen? Uh, where did that happen? Uh, complex where I live at. Where is that? What, where's that located? Uh, in, okay. And is that in the city of Ypsilanti, Michigan? Is that in Washtenaw County, Michigan? All right. Well, so what happened uh, when your life got threatened? How was your life threatened? Well, I just come back from uh, picking up uh, deals from the Hope Center to uh, bring back to the complex that, uh, two for myself, along with my girlfriend, and two inbound people. I bring two for the last seven, eight years. Uh, I pulled in the third handicap parking spot. Uh, I went back and learned got the roof out of the back because I turned around and started walking. About 30 feet to the entrance of the building. This uh, resident walked up to me and started mumbling or something. I said, What'd you say? He says, I told you never to speak to my wife again. I'm going to blow his motherfucking brains out. He stepped back, jerked his shirt up, pulled my semi automatic out of his waistband, shoved it under my throat for about five, six seconds, kept saying the same word over and over, removed it from there and put the barrel on my forehead. For another five, six seconds. Well, I figured I'm just a dead man, so I just kind of took my arm up like that and started walking away towards the entrance to the building. And he poked me in the back with it about three times. Okay. Now, you just made a gesture about what you did with your arm. Can you describe what that was? I said, I think I, I, think I took my arm after he removed the gun from the, my forehead. I think it went like that, maybe against the battle bone. Okay. Just, but, uh, just to turn it. It was my back to be coming. All right. Is the person who did that, who did this to you in the courtroom today? Yes, he Can you point him out and describe him, please? He said right over there, what's your. Back to the record reflect in identification, the defendant, Bruce Larkins. Without objection, record shows so reflect. Arnold, I'm going to show you what I've marked as people's proposed exhibit number one. Yeah, that's a bad word. So, so okay. All right. And do you recognize is that the firearm he used that day? Yes. Okay. Um, we moved people's proposed one. Any objection or what here? No, thank you. Exhibit one is admitted, and yes, you may approach. Oh, sorry, thank you. Yeah, I know you didn't ask. All right. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Cross examination. Yes, thank you. Good 
Good morning, Mr. Gornow. It's my understanding that you and Mr. Larkins have resided in the same apartment complex for about four years. Is that correct? I've been there 10 years. He's only been there two years. So you believe he's only been there two years? Pardon? You believe he's only been there two years? I believe so, 2021. And would I be correct in stating that that is when you began to know him to began to know him to have a relationship with a miss with um Patricia who lives in that building? Now you stated that you pulled up to the complex and parked in the handicaps, is that right? And would I be correct in stating that um, the vehicle that you pulled up in has a handicap sticker or a high handicap license plate? Plate. And that handicap license, that vehicle belongs to your girlfriend, Paula Mahler, is that correct? Yes. And that's her handicap license plate? Yes. Now, about the time you came to know Mr. Larkins um, through um, Patricia Larkins, pardon me, through um, Patricia, would I be correct in stating that you and Patricia had had a romantic, romantic relationship? Sexual relationship. Both had, I had a girlfriend and she had a boyfriend. Just sort of getting what we wanted to be into one. And would I be correct in stating that your girlfriend was Miss Mahler, Paula Mahler? Yes. And if not in 221, um, at some point within these past two years between 2021 and now, Miss Patricia married Mr. Larkins, is that correct? I believe she told me she got married in December of 2020. Now, would I be correct in stating that you and Miss, now Miss Patricia Larkins, Mrs. Patricia Larkins, um, sexual relationship, as you described it, um, lasted at least six months? About five and a half. Along the way, I never found out she was seeing this man. And during the time you had that relationship with her, isn't it correct that you um, courted her in some manner by buying her gifts? Well, I bought her flowers. I bought her uh, set of gems in the bathroom, her earrings. And Would I be correct? And as also as part of. Um, a courting type gesture that you also sometimes gave her money? Never gave her money. Better. I took her grocery shopping on several occasions. She put uh, $1,250 on my bridge card when I got to the state. And then money had accumulated on it. And it's sometimes during this relationship that you had, um, you would eat over her house. Isn't that correct? That's correct. At breakfast every once in a while, coffee, no dinner to speak of. Every once in a while on holidays, she's it's a big meal for 10 or 12 guests to show up. Now, would I be correct that um, at some point after um, her marriage to Mr. Larkin, that um, you began to um, indicate that you believe that Mrs. Larkin owed you money? Yes. Okay. And on the date of July the 3rd of 2023, you actually had an encounter with Mrs. Larkin. Is that correct? Yes. 
had a discussion with her on the elevator. <laughs> Isn't it correct that she threatened her at the time with regard to the? I I told her this is a threat. I said to her, I tired and listened to her count on her slides, and I said, I guess the only way I'm going to get my fifteen hundred fifty dollars back, I'm going to take the court and sue you and let a judge make the decision. Now is that a threat? Is that a is that's a statement? That's a statement. Okay. Isn't it correct that on occasions that you did say that you would have to do something about this vaguely? Mm -hmm. No, just generally that you would say to her that you said to her that you were going to have to do something about this if she didn't pay you back your money. I just explained to you that I'd take her to court and sue her. So my question is, did you ever use the words that I just said? If you're asking me if I ever threatened this woman, no, I've never threatened this woman. I made a statement. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to reframe my question because I don't believe you're understanding me. Isn't it correct that when you saw her on the elevator, this was not the first time that you had approached her with regard to this money? No, it's not the first time. It's about the third time in 22 months. And isn't it correct that um, on these at least three times that you approached her, that on at least one of the occasions you said, I'm gonna, if I don't get my money back, I'm gonna do something about this. Well, I never made a statement. I made, I made you the correct statement. What I Would I be correct in stating that you have no written agreement with her with regard to paying back the money? No, I don't got it all logged on the calendar book of 2020. So, on this day after you um, had threatened Miss Larkin, isn't it correct that that's when you? Did you so? Isn't it correct on after um, you had made these threats to Miss Larkin, Mrs. Larkin in the elevator, that 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 after that is when you saw Mr. Larkin, correct? I didn't make any threats to that one. Isn't it correct that after that you had after that encounter that you saw Mr. Larkin? Went out the front. His wife and I went out the front door together, got on the elevator on my floor. She had a schmeter uh, shopping cart, unloaded groceries, and her car was parked right there. That's when I got in my car with Paula and left to go to the Hope Center. I was going approximately an hour before I got back. In the meantime. And would I be correct in stating that when you got back, it was after you saw and had your encounter with Mrs. Larkin in the elevator. I saw him one hour after I had an encounter with her. Six ten p.m. Now, when you saw Mr. Larkin, would I be correct in stating that Mr. Larkin used a cane? What? That he had a cane to walk with. Yeah. Am I correct in stating that Mr. Larkin always uses some sort of assisted assistance or aid, um, like a cane or a scooter, to get around? I've seen several times. And would I be correct in also stating that when you saw Mr. Larkin, that he had um, apparatus for breathing for um, his oxygen tank? Oh, I know it's In the past, would I be correct in saying that you've seen Mr. Larkin with oxygen? Not really. I've seen I've seen him use a tall walker, push cart walker, and a cane. I don't ever remember. I can't particularly say I've noticed him using oxygen. 
We've got a sign on the door that says oxygen. So you've seen the sign on his apartment door that states oxygen in use? And would I be correct in stating that your girlfriend lived across the hall from yeah. Mrs. Larkin yeah. while you were engaging in this yeah. extra relationship, sexual relationship? And during that time, there was no sign about oxygen in use on um, on Mrs. Larkin's door. Is that right? No, no. So that was only after Mr. Larkin moved in that that sign came up, correct? Yes, I'd say so. Would I be correct in stating that you do not use any aids to assist you with walking? Not yet. Almost 82. Would I also be correct in stating that you do not use oxygen to assist with your breathing? No, I don't. Would I be correct in stating that when Mr. Um, Larkins approached you about your encounter with his wife earlier that day that um, you were not pleased with his interaction with you? Why would I be pleased when we just tried to kill him? Would I be correct in stating that on prior occasions when um, approaching Mrs. Larkin with regard to the money you believe she owes, her, owes you, that you called her or referred to her as something other than her name? No, never. Would I be correct in stating that you actually have on at least two occasions when asking about the money you believe you're owed, called her an N-I-G-G-E-R? No, I never. Isn't it correct that you have also referred to Mr. Larkin in that manner? I did one time, yes. He told me he was going to beat my mother's fucking ass on my, call me up on my phone, told me that was the second time he threatened physical violence. And isn't it correct that's because you have repeatedly threatened his wife, Mrs. Larkin, regarding this money that you say she owes you? Objection. I've never threatened that woman with that. Sustained. Sustained. Fine. And would I be correct in stating that when um, Mr. Larkin spoke to you about owing, about your encounter with his wife that day, that um, when he initially spoke to you, there was, when he spoke to you initially, there was no weapon displayed. There was what? There was no weapon displayed when he initially spoke to you. Oh, he displayed the weapon right after he got done saying, I told you never talk to my wife again. I'll blow your motherfucking brains out. He stepped back, jerked his shirt up, pulled him out of his belt, shoved it up underneath my throat for about five or six seconds, then put the barrel on my forehead about five or six seconds. Isn't it correct that after he said what he said to you, that you actually took steps closer to him? Why would I do that? And isn't it, and isn't it correct that the weapon was not displayed until after you had made these steps towards him? I never made any steps towards that man. He was doing the stepping towards me. And isn't it correct that at that time, he was the person who needed the assistance with the walking, correct? How was I to know that? 
He didn't look like any, he didn't have any problem walking up there when he walked from the building up to where I was at. But he did walk with a cane, didn't he? He had a cane, yeah. And you'd seen him before you stated with a walker. I don't see that man about that often. My he, question he is, had, had you apparatus for one day and the next day he might have a different apparatus. But you had seen him before using a walker. Yes. And you'd seen him before using a scooter. Yeah. You may have one moment, please. You may. Those are all the questions I have for you this time. Thank you. Right. Sir, you may step down. Thank you. We call uh, Officer Martez Gibbs. Sir, please come forward to be sworn. So I'll just swear from the testimony about the truth, all truth, and nothing but truth shall be God. State is still your first and last name. Martez Gibbs, M A R T E Z G I B B S. Main Corps. Thank you. Mr. Gibbs, how are you employed? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Department, as police officer. And were you working on July 3rd, 2023? Yes. Um, did, some, did you get dispatched out to 401 West Michigan to investigate um, a felonious assault? Yes. And when you got there, did you ultimately speak with uh, someone named Bruce Larkins? Yes. And is that person in the courtroom today? Yes. He's, he's, where is he? He's right out there. All right. Thank you. Um, and at some point, were you able to recover a firearm from Mr. Larkin's apartment? Yes. And you had an opportunity before the hearing today to look at people's exhibit number one, that yes. photo. Is that the firearm that was recovered? Yes. And did you inspect that firearm to see if it's an, if it's a working legitimate firearm? Yes. Was it loaded when yes. you found it? Excuse me. When you found it, was it loaded? Yes. All right. Um, and thank you. No other questions. All right. Cross examination. So, Gibbs, you indicated that you found the um, firearm. Let me back up. Officer Gibbs, approximately what time did you arrive at Mr. and Mrs. Larkin's apartment? Oh, couldn't tell you. I can't recall. Look at the By chance, would you have your report with the, with you to refresh your recollection? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come around. I can, Your Honor, may I have a moment to? Uh, you may. After looking at um, your report is your recollection refreshed? Yes. So, approximately what time did you arrive at Mr. Larkin's apartment? Okay. And when you arrived at Mr. Larkin's apartment, you indicated that you um, you initially had a, an opportunity to speak to him. Is that correct? Yes. And he did, in fact, tell you that. Yes, you know, I'll rephrase that. Thank you. Isn't it, and isn't it correct that based on your conversation with him, you were able to um, find a firearm in his apartment, correct? Yes. And at all times, Mr. Larkin was cooperative with you. Is that right? <laughs> No. 
Would I be correct in saying that Mr. Larkin was upset about the situation oh, that occurred yes. with he and his wife? Yes. But he did not lie to you about having a firearm. Isn't that correct? No. And isn't it correct that he even told you he had a CPL? Yes. And you were able to confirm that he has a CPS. So he's licensed to carry and he and you were able to find the weapon without any challenges. Okay. When you arrived, would I also be correct in stating that you were able to observe that Mr. Larkin had um, had on um, and Thank you. So you were able to see that he actually that he um was utilizing or had recently utilized having to have oxygen. Yes. And would I be correct in that you also were able to see that he needed um, aids to assist him with walking? Yes. So you saw his cane, is yes. that correct? And did you see his walker? No, didn't see a walker. <laughs> did you see a motorized scooter? No, didn't see that. Well, we, were, we were in the hallway though, so. <laughs> And when you arrived at 6.14 p.m., would I be correct in stating there was not a firearm on Mr. Larkin's person? Correct. And that you at no time saw a firearm on Mr. Larkin's person? Correct. But you were able to see that he had, as a licensed, a person licensed to carry, that he had the appropriate equipment to carry if he chose to, correct? Yes. Your Honor, may I have one moment, please? You may. Right, thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Any read, right? No. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Any further witnesses for no. the people? No. Any witnesses for the defense? No. Bind over. Response? Yeah, we object to the bind over. Based upon the, don't need argument, based upon the testimony in this case, um, the court would find that the people have shown by probable cause that an, an offense was committed and that the, by probable cause that the defendant committed the offense, therefore the defendant is bound to risk trial on this charge. Ms. Gaines. Yeah, we acknowledge receipt of the information that we do on the record, and this time my client wishes to stand. Defendant. We have informed reading standing mute. Court will enter a not guilty plea. Pretrial will be set for September 12th at 1 30 p.m. with Judge Cuffey. September 12th, 2023, 1 30 before Judge Cuffey. Thank you. Bond in this matter will continue. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Which one? Even just two years. How many witnesses are there? 